Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the lift curve and lift slope for 2D airfoil sections. Uh, so the first thing to do is to take a look at the axes of the plot. So here we have the y-axis and the x-axis on these plots. The y-axis has this term C sub L or CL and the x-axis has alpha or angle of attack. So the y-axis C, CL is the lift coefficient which I've defined down here which is the lift over one-half times the density times the velocity squared. This term here, right here, is the dynamic pressure times the cord length. This is for a 2D airfoil. Also, you can also think of it as an infinite wing. Uh, for a 3D airfoil, you'd have a capital L here, and this uh, would no longer be cord length, it'd be some reference area, like a wing area. Uh, but we're dealing with 2D airfoils right now because it's a good starting point. So, the okay, and then the x-axis is the angle of attack. Uh, which I've described in another video, and I'll post that in the, in the description below. So what does the lift curve actually tell you? Well, it's saying that for a given angle of attack, if you give me an angle of attack, I can tell you what the lift, co the lift coefficient is. And this is, these are for particular uh, airfoil sections. So let's just say this, is, this one here is for a symmetric airfoil. So we'll say that it's like the NACA 0012 airfoil, which is symmetric. And for the Cambrian one, it could be like a NACA 2412. So these are specific to specific airfoil sections. Okay, so let's start with the symmetric airfoil. So here I've drawn a symmetric airfoil. And so first we'll start with when it's at zero angle attack. So that's pretty, pretty horizontal here. And at zero angle attack, the air is moving over the, the wing and the pressure distribution on the top and the bottom are equal so that there's no net lift on this airfoil. So if there's no lift, if the lift is zero, that means the lift coefficient is zero which means for zero angle of attack, the lift coefficient is zero, and we can put a point here, right at the origin of this graph. And what happens as I increase the angle of attack here is that the pressure, the pressure distribution over this airfoil changes, and we get a net upward lift. And so the lift increases, which means the CL, the lift coefficient, increases. So as we move to higher angles of attack, positive angles of attack, so positive angles of attack, we get... Um, an increase in the lift coefficient. Uh, and you can see here that from, you know, in this region here, it's pretty linear. So it's, so it's for smaller or for smallish angles of attack, as a rule of thumb, the, uh, the lift curve is actually, is actually linear. Uh, then as we increase the angle of attack more, we get to a point where flow separates off of the, uh, off of the airfoil if it's too high like this, the surface, the flow separates off of the airfoil back here, and you get a stalled condition. Uh, you get a stall condition right here. So this point here, uh, you can take the the lift coefficient at this angle, and that's the maximum lift coefficient that you'll get out of this airfoil. And this angle is the angle of attack at stall or alpha stall. Okay, so that is for a symmetric airfoil. Now, what if you have a cambered airfoil? So here I have a slightly cambered airfoil. And if we do the same thing where I start at zero angle of attack, this is pretty much zero angle of attack. If I start at zero angle of attack, there's actually a positive lift acting on this cambered airfoil. So that's why here, at an angle of attack of zero, you actually have a positive lift coefficient. So what you have to do is you have to decrease this to a negative angle of attack to get a zero lift. So if I decrease it to like here, this is exaggerated, but if I decrease the angle of attack to a negative angle of attack like this, this will give you a zero lift. And that's why your zero lift angle of attack will actually be negative. Uh, again, this Cambridge airfoil has a linear, linearish slope to it until it gets into this stalled region. Uh, I'll talk about stall in another video. Uh, and so then, if you look at the lift slope, so you, in this linear region you can define a lift slope uh, because you can just take a rise over the run, so you can take the lift coefficient over the angle of attack, or angle of attack, and that'll give you your lift slope. So uh, lift slope I've seen for like 2D airfoils is defined as A sub zero, at least it's defined like that in Anderson and a couple of websites. Uh, so it's really just the change in the lift coefficient over the change in the angle of attack. And that's also called in flight dynamics, uh, it's C sub L sub alpha, which is pronounced CL alpha. And so that gives you the lift slope. So what happens then is for thin airfoil theory, you can approximate these, uh, these graphs here. So I guess let me just start by saying that these plots were obtained um, by taking wind tunnel data. And this is why I said it was, it's also an infinite wing. So in a wind tunnel, what you can do to approximate an airfoil is you take a wing that is uh, 
it's it spans the entire width of the of the uh, test section. It's a constant cord length all the way across, and it approximates uh, a 2D airfoil. So it doesn't have these 3D effects, especially the effects at the end, the wingtip ends. And so what they did to get this these plots here, uh, I'll post a picture or a link to a picture of the of an example of a NACA plot for for one of the airfoils. Is that they so you just take the airfoil in the wind tunnel and you start at a certain angle of attack, you measure the lift, uh, and you know what the density is, the velocity, the cord length, you can get the lift coefficient, and you just plot them. So these are actually points that are plotted. I just drew it as a line. So that's how you can get these plots in real life. But if you want to do a quick uh, back the envelope cal calculation really quick, you can assume uh, you can assume that the airfoil is thin. You can just use thin airfoil theory. This doesn't apply for a lot of things, but just if you make the right assumptions, you can use thin airfo airfoil theory. And from this theory, uh, it uses vortex sheets. It's a lot of math, a lot of fun integrals, and you end up getting circulation, capital gamma, and from that you can use the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem to get the lift, and from the lift you can get the lift coefficient. And what ends up happening for thin airfoils, for a symmetric thin airfoil, you'll get that the lift coefficient is equal to 2 pi alpha. So that gives you this it gives you a straight line. So what happens is it gives you, let me get my marker, uh, it'll give you a straight line here. So it'll give you this, and it'll just keep going. It won't approximate this stall because these, this is a viscous effect. So, uh, so right, so it'll give you the lift coefficient equal, is equal to 2 pi alpha. So what is the lift slope from here? The lift slope is just, is just the derivative of the lift coefficient uh, with respect to alpha. So if you take the derivative here, right, it'll just be a0 is equal to 2 pi. Uh, uh, one last thing is that the trailing edge and leading edge devices such as slats and flaps alter the lift curve, they'll shift it, they'll change uh, where the stall occurs, and I'll go through those in more detail in, in subsequent videos. Uh, so that's a basic intro on the lift curve and lift coefficient and uh, lift slope, so thanks for watching.